Is the secret to growing a 2,000 pound pumpkin a fungus? Today we're talking about mycorrhizae, the microscopic organisms that form a symbiotic relationship with plant roots. But are they the real secret ingredient or just another overhyped myth? Mycorrhizae literally means fungus root in Greek. Part of this fungus lives inside the root. The rest forms thin, thread-like hyphae that can sometimes reach out up to 18 inches past the root zone. The plant feeds these fungi sugars from its root exudates. In return, mycorrhizae bring back water and nutrients that the plant could never access alone. A root colonized by mycorrhizae can access seven times more immobile nutrients in the soil, reaching into cracks and pores far too small for root hairs. Here are some of the amazing things mycorrhizae can do. Mycorrhizae release phosphatase enzymes that convert locked up phosphorus into a usable form, providing up to 80% of a plant's phosphorus uptake. They also produce chelates, compounds that free up nutrients like calcium, magnesium, zinc, and iron. Mycorrhizae secrete a sticky substance called glomalin, a biological glue that improves soil structure, airflow, and water holding capacity. Their hyphae, just 1 17th the width of a root hair, dramatically boost drought tolerance by reaching water roots can't. They even help block out pathogens by occupying space and outcompeting harmful microbes. Mycorrhizae aren't a sprinkle it and forget it miracle powder. They are living organisms that can't survive for more than a few weeks without a live host plant. That's why cover crops matter, and why a tilled, bare patch has almost no living mycorrhizae. I learned the hard way. I spread mycorrhizae across my bare spring patch before any pumpkin roots existed, the thought being that I'd build up the soil biology ahead of time. Then I found out spores must contact roots within 24 hours of exposure to moisture in order to survive. I basically fertilized my soil with dollar bills. Now I inoculate my winter rye cover crop with mycorrhizae. The fungi colonize those roots and stay alive until my pumpkin hits the ground in spring. Most giant pumpkin growers use mycorrhizae. In the spring, they sprinkle it in the planting hole when they transplant their seedlings outside, ensuring direct contact with the roots. Over the next few months, growers are on their hands and knees, sprinkling mycorrhizae at every leaf node and covering it with soil. Those buried nodes form new roots above and below the vine, each one a fresh colonization point for fungi. But here's the twist. Some growers have grown 2,500 pound pumpkins without using mycorrhizae at all. So is mycorrhizae the secret sauce? No. Genetics come first, then balanced nutrients, because if your soil is missing those building blocks, the fungus has nothing to deliver. But could mycorrhizae be the difference between a 2,500 pound pumpkin and a world record? Possibly. So why aren't some growers using it then? Because plants shut down mycorrhizal colonization when available phosphate is high. Plants turn off a signal molecule called strigolactone, which prevents spores from germinating. But high soil phosphorus on a soil test doesn't mean the plant can actually use it. In my patch, the soil test shows plenty of phosphorus, yet the tissue test shows deficiency. That means the plant will release strigolactone and recruit mycorrhizae, because it knows it needs help converting that locked up phosphorus into usable form. So the next time you see a giant pumpkin, remember, it wasn't grown alone. Somewhere beneath the soil, a hidden fungal network may have been mining water, unlocking nutrients, and quietly doing the heavy lifting. Mycorrhizae won't grow a world record pumpkin by themselves, but they might be what pushes your pumpkin to the next level.